Recovery is stupendous. Achievable. Hope. Freedom. 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 Empowering. It's unique to everyone. It's a journey, not a destination. Getting a new lease on life. It's finding restoration after you fall down. Recovery is having the freedom to enjoy life. For me, it was finding a way to really love myself. My recovery is possible in part because of my own sense of purpose. Welcome to Montana's Peer Network's Recovery Talks podcast. I'm Andy Daniel. I'm the social media coordinator for MPN. And with me today is Jason McNeese from the Helena Indian Alliance's Leo Pocha Clinic. Welcome, Jason. Good morning, Andy. Thank you. So we're going to talk a little bit about Medication Assisted Treatment, or MAT, today. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about what that is? Absolutely, yeah. Um, medication Assisted Treatment, or MAT, MAT is the uh, use of medications in combination with counseling and behavioral therapies for the treatment of substance use disorders. A combination of medication and behavioral therapies is effective in the treatment of substance use disorders and oftentimes help people in order to sustain their recovery. Uh, Medication-assisted treatment or opioid use disorder has been repeatedly proven to reduce overdose death um, relative to no treatment or non-medication treatment, um, reducing the severity of opioid use disorder through medications also helps to improve mental health. Um, and then additionally helps to reduce the barriers that are essential to addressing both overdose and suicide. Have you found that there's some stigma associated with medication-assisted treatment? Yeah, there is a lot of stigma that is directed at medication-assisted treatment methods. The first thing that comes to mind for a lot of persons in recovery is Suboxone, and that Suboxone's not clean. So when we talk about medication-assisted treatment, that's not only Suboxone, but that also can be um, Sublocade and Vivitrol. So there's several medications that can be used when you're using a medication-assisted treatment method, and that doesn't mean that somebody's just on buprenorphine. Um, It doesn't mean that someone's just on Suboxone, and that can be a difficult thing for persons that are using a medication-assisted treatment approach to say, Right, I take this medication, it helps to normalize and stabilize, you know, the way that the um, dopamine reward system works in my brain, and reducing that stigma is a really important thing, right? Stigma continues to create barriers for individuals to work a program of recovery. That being said, medication-assisted treatment doesn't mean, you know, just that someone's replacing one drug for another, right? It means that somebody's willing and has the ability to participate in a program of recovery. And so those three medications work on the brain differently, correct? That's true, yeah. So there's several components to the medication. Um, You know, one of the components is like an opioid reuptake blocker. So that would be the same medication that would be in Narcan. One of the things we offer here at the clinic is Narcan training and uh, free Narcan to the public also, and so that just helps to block the reuptake of those opioids. Great. So uh, you're at the Helena Indian Alliance, Leo Pocha Clinic. Uh, Can you tell us a little bit about how your program operates? I was hired at the Leo Pocha Clinic in 2016 um, and began to develop and design uh, behavioral health peer support program to work in combination with the medication-assisted treatment team as well as the addiction counseling and mental health professionals at the Leo Pocha Clinic. Uh, With our medication-assisted treatment program, uh, peer support and addictions counseling are required components of that, which has proven to lead us to greater successes. My role helps to kind of fill that gap where individuals may have a wait before they're able to have their chemical dependency assessment with the addictions counselor. I'm able to meet with people prior to that or, you know, quickly so that people 
are able to feel supported in their recovery. Additionally, I'm able to advocate for individuals to their providers if they feel that they're struggling in their recovery. Maybe it's something that they can't discuss with their provider or their probation and parole officer, and also to support individuals in the community to help to improve, uh, to help to build positive socialization skills. So you're able to help people before they're able to have that assessment, right? Generally, yeah. I'll receive a referral from the nurse practitioner, um, who's the medication-assisted treatment prescriber. Um, I'll contact that person, you know, within 24 hours and try to schedule an appointment with them that same week. Uh, so I imagine that alleviates some of the um, difficulties when when it takes a while to get in to a, for an assessment, right? Because I know in a lot of clinics, um, getting in for an assessment can take quite a long time. And once somebody's made that decision, it's good to have support, even if they can't get in for that. Yeah, I can agree with that 100%. I think oftentimes if individuals are left to wait after making the decision to use a medication-assisted treatment approach, oftentimes people move back move back to use of the substance of their choice. Can you sort of walk me through the process of, you know, from the time the person contacts you or comes in your door through assessment and how the treatment works? Absolutely. Yeah, so... We do have a walk-in clinic three days a week. So on Mondays and Tuesdays, we have a walk-in clinic from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. We're closed over the lunch hour. And then again on Fridays from 1 to 3 p.m. So somebody would walk into the clinic, be the nurse practitioner who is the x waiver provider for the medication-assisted treatment program. And the nurse practitioner would make her assessments and dependent on what her assessment is, prescribe the appropriate medication. Uh, after that, there would be a referral that would go to both the uh, peer support specialist as well as the addictions counselor or mental health professionals, depending on need. The peer support specialist receives that referral generally the same day and would contact that individual within 24 hours to schedule an appointment, hopefully within that same week. At the end of the week on Friday, the Addictions counselors' referrals are staffed and assigned to the individual counselors. So within seven to ten days of that initial visit with the nurse practitioner, anybody beginning medication-assisted treatment should have an appointment scheduled with their addictions counselor. As we continue to see an increase in persons utilizing math, that wait time does get longer and longer. Right. There are certain days of the week that we have LACs staff to be able to take walk-in assessments. So in, in some situations, a person may be able to come into the clinic, see the nurse practitioner, and have their addictions assessment that same day. So can you tell me a little bit about these, the success rates at your clinic? Well, at the Approach Clinic, we're firm believers in removing barriers and making accessibility to treatment easier for individuals when they make that decision to begin their recovery journey. Participants that utilize both medication-assisted treatment in conjunction with peer support and behavioral health counseling, we are showing an 80% success rate. So Tara Wells, um, the nurse practitioner that works with the medication-assisted treatment program here at the Leo Poach Clinic, and myself have worked to develop a MAT program together. We have over 20 months of data, and over those 20 months, 80% of participants have been successful in our program. So that being said, 80% of participants, 8 out of 10 people, stay sober for 20 months or longer. Well, that's really great. So peer support is, for those who, you know, aren't aren't familiar with that, that's uh, sort of a, a non-clinical role in, in this whole thing. Um, can you talk a little bit about how uh, your role is different from the clinicians and how you guys work together to make sure that the person is supported in their recovery? Yeah, that's a, a really good question. 
question. Working in a clinical setting as a non-clinical provider can be a difficult role to play. When individuals choose to spend time with a peer support specialist, the idea is that that's in more of a relaxed setting, somebody that has life experience. So myself, I'm an opioid addict in recovery. I use medication-assisted treatment as kind of the kickstart to my recovery uh, in conjunction with behavioral health treatment, and that's what's led me to long-term sobriety. So being able to have shared experience um, of the programming here at the Leo Pocha Clinic helps to facilitate a connection between myself and the individual. So can you tell me a little bit about how your role fits into uh, treatment planning? Yeah, so being a non-clinical provider in a clinical setting can be a difficult role to play. So the clinical providers here at Leo Poach Clinic and Helena Indian Alliance have been strong proponents to my position as a peer support specialist, right? I feel supported by the clinicians that surround me, and therefore I have the ability to support the peers that are entering our program. Treatment planning isn't done by myself. So the, you know, the treatment plan is something that the addictions counselor and the peer creates together in their session. And then we work together to achieve the goals that have been set out in the treatment plan. Treatment planning and recovery planning are two vastly different things, right? What does my treatment plan look like? What are the objectives the LAC has set out in front of me for myself to achieve in treatment and recovery planning? What are the objectives that I have set for myself, the expectations of myself in my recovery? What are the things that I can do that I'm willing to do? I I would guess then that you're a little more hands-on with helping somebody create a recovery plan. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so more so than recovery planning specifically, I like to use um, wellness planning, either utilizing the uh, AMSA's Eight Dimensions of Wellness or the World Health Organization's Eight Dimensions of Wellness, setting goals in the lowest scoring dimensions of the Eight Dimensions of Wellness, and then working to set recovery goals within those dimensions. Can you talk a little bit about how your um, lived experience informs your work? So my personal lived experience definitely helped me to excel as a peer support specialist. Um, I'm an uh, opioid addict in recovery, and I suffer from depression myself. I utilized the services at Helena Indian Alliance prior to being clean and sober prior to being in recovery. When I have been to treatment seven different times in my life, the message that I always heard was, this is what you're going to do. This is how you're going to do it. The only way you're going to get better, and if you don't like it, there's the door. I came to the Helen Indian Alliance, and the message that I heard here was, what have you tried that hasn't worked? What are you willing to do, and how can we help you? Nobody was upset with me or mad at me if I didn't turn back in a homework sheet. They said, okay, so maybe that doesn't work for you and just laid several other options out on the table. This allowed me to be accountable to myself for my own recovery plan and to be able to create and develop my own recovery. Nobody had the expectation that I'm going to be accountable for the things that I do to them in my recovery, right? But they did hold me responsible for my actions. What other services are offered at the Leo Pocha Clinic? Yeah, we have a ton of different services. I have a list here in front of me because that's the only way that I'm going to remember all of them. <laughs> um, so that question, I mean, this, this list goes on for two different pages, and I'm kind of just going to break them down into um, their specific categories. Sure. We have... Um, the Leo Poach Clinic, which um, promotes and provides culturally relevant healthcare services for all cultures, Native and non-Native. A lot of times people believe that we serve only the uh, Native American population in the greater Helena area. Um, that's not true. Currently, we have about 60% Native American and 40% non-Native in our clinic. And then the opposite of that, right? 
40% Native American and 60% non-Native in our behavioral health services clinic. Um, so we're all one organization and we work cohesively together. Um, but our clinic provides outpatient medical care. So that's non-hospitalized medical care and non-emergency care. We provide diabetes care, prevention and education, nutrition counseling, immunization, breast and cervical cancer screening, um, AIDS, HIV, and STD testing and counseling, and then, of course, our medication-assisted treatment or MAP program. In our behavioral health program, we offer a four-phase substance abuse and mental health program with both outpatient counseling and inpatient referral, aftercare services and outreach, education. We have a psychiatrist on staff, anger management classes, ACT classes, Prime for Life case management, and peer support. Um, additionally, we have a youth program. We have a tobacco abuse prevention program. We have a senior program that um, encourages positive and healthy senior interactions through social activities and events. We have the Helena Indian Alliance Big Sky Activities. So monthly we have a Big Sky meeting here, and then we have a diabetes program also that helps to promote healthy lifestyles through prevention, education, fitness, and medical treatment. So it sounds like you're in a, in a good position to sort of integrate all of that care together, behavioral health and physical health facets. Would you say that's Absolutely. true? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I'd say that's true 100%. Yeah, we do follow an integrative healthcare model. Um, currently, we are an FQHC lookalike. We are transitioning to a HRSA designation. So rather than being a lookalike facility, we will be like a federally qualified healthcare facility, um, which would be similar to the Peerview Healthcare here in Helena. So we'll be under that same type of designation, which basically will allow us to continue to expand our services um, and reach a greater number of persons in the Helena area. Great. Uh, just to wrap up, I know that you have a support group uh, available. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Yeah. Um, every Friday at noon um, here at the Leo Coach Clinic in classroom number one, we have a peer support group. It's different than a 12-step model group. It's kind of open to everybody, right? So if it's chronic pain, mental health, addictions, single parents, whatever it is that you may be struggling with, uh, we kind of just check in, share our struggles and our successes, share coping skills, and then, you know, maybe work through um, a certain activity together. And do you have to be uh, part of your program specifically to to join that support group? No, you don't. It's open to the general public. Thanks again for joining me on this podcast. Sounds like you've got a great program going there. And there's lots of different options available for people who are in recovery. You're very welcome. Yeah, thanks for inviting me to join you today. Recovery works and recovery is possible. Recovery works and recovery is possible. Recovery works. Recovery is possible. Recovery is possible. <laughs> recovery works and recovery is possible. Recovery works and recovery is possible. Recovery works and recovery is possible. Recovery is possible.